So, you're in your 40s. You have young children. Here's my real life situation. I'm in my 40s. I have two small children that attend Montessori school, and I have two elderly parents who live with me. Protecting my family now is my priority, but it always has been, but I'm sure it will be yours too. But here's my problem. I have a bad habit thinking the virus isn't gonna affect me, and I keep going out by day-to-day -day basis without a second thought. You know, no mask, no gloves, no toilet paper. I know. And you know, I'm not the only one. Let's just say I know a lot of people that have the same overconfidence problem. You know, they think they're a better driver or more healthy of a person, and therefore they also think that the probability of them contracting the virus would be something like, I don't know, one in 5,000. And it can't possibly happen to them. The more I learn about the virus, I'm actually quite surprised at how high the probability actually is. Fact, nobody has the antibody. So it will spread to everybody and it's very hard to stop it. The transmission chain just continues. The coronavirus is a type of cold. They call it SARS coronavirus 2, but let's just call it COVID-19 because it's easier to say and less confusing compared to SARS. So COVID-19 is a subtype of a wide range of coronaviruses. And there are other existing coronaviruses that have infected many people, but the cause are just common colds. And it doesn't cause death because most people already have the antibodies for them. And also because those viruses are not as severe as COVID-19. A researcher in China named Barton Wang who was on a podcast that I had recently caught, said that for people in my age group, people in their 40s, the fatality rate from an infection is about 0.4%. That's from the latest study out of China. And therefore, that number equates to one out of every 250 peoples. Estimates of contracting the virus has multiple factors. How long was the exposure from the other person that had it? How close was the proximity that the, from the other person? What stage were they at? How strong is your immunity? And it gets complicated. But the good news is that this is completely preventable. If you're in your 40s, you don't have to die. But you need to recognize the symptoms, which can be very mild, unless you get blood work done and you know what's going on, for example. Basically, all you really need to do is rest. Survival is just based on rest. Sleep and eat for two to three weeks, get your veggies and protein amino acids in, in your intake, and create these antibodies and you can survive. But there are those people that are not careful. So COVID-19 has two different phases. The first phase is in the first week. They'll start to have a cough and a low-grade fever, less than 100 degrees for most people. And this will go away in about a week. And this is where it fools you because you think your fever is gone and that you're recovered. But COVID-19 is different. When your fever is gone, and depending on your genetic makeup and depending on your body's reaction to the virus, sometimes it can trigger your immune system to overreact, and that's what do doctors called a cytokine storm. And this is where the immune cells attack not just the viral invader, but the healthy tissue as well, just like an autoimmune disorder. Basically, there is inflammation in the lungs and the heart. And if left unchecked, your immune system will start to attack your lung tissue and your heart muscles. And this process actually impedes the antibody production because of the certain cytokine functions. And it reduces the activity of your B cells, which produces the antibody. So then you have cases of people who don't have a fever, but can't breathe, which is why you hear in the news that people are dying from respiratory failure. There are also people who don't have fever, but their heart muscles are very inflamed. You can do a blood test to check for two biomarkers to see how inflamed your heart muscles is. And without knowing these particulars, it's very difficult to handle the potential dangers of COVID-19. And you will see people who are young, who will drop dead because of COVID-19. And here's the crazy stunner for you. There was a Biogen conference in Massachusetts in the first week of March. They had 70 attendees and from there, 66 people tested positive. That's just one attendee that went into the conference, mingled with everyone for the day, and now 66 people are affected. This is how entire hospitals can fail. COVID-19, it's tricky to get rid of. It's not a virus that is transferred to different parts of your body via blood. It's a respiratory and digestive tract disease. It infects your lungs, it infects your intestine, which is why some people have diarrhea and nausea, which is why people are buying toilet paper. 
And when your body is trying to get rid of a virus in this kind of environment, your antibody is not in your blood, actually. It, it doesn't do anything if it's in your blood because this is in your bronchi or your airways, which have an epithelium cells. And, and these are different kinds that require different antibodies known as IgA. So your body has to produce enough IgA to be secreted onto these mucous membranes. And those IgAs will then be able to bind with the, the virus and neutralize them. And it's not given that everyone will be a good producer of IgA, as IgA levels differ from person to person. Some people aren't able to produce IgA very efficiently. They can produce a lot of antibodies in their blood, but they can't produce antibodies in their lungs. And the coronavirus is a bit tricky because it causes the lungs to have liquid inside. The membrane that separates your blood vessel into the alveoli is weakened by the coronavirus. And if you have liquid built in your lungs, it basically becomes a reservoir for the virus and to neutralize all the virus, it takes time and a lot of IgA secretion to get that done. So if you're you know, malnutritioned and you don't have enough antibody production, it may take upwards of two to three weeks to completely clear all the virus in your body. So here's a question. Is there a chance that you could contract the virus and quietly beat it, developing the antibodies without showing any of the symptoms? Well, people who are under the age of 25 may not show any outward symptoms whatsoever, no fever, no coughing, especially kids. Their antibody generation and speed capacity are so huge, they quickly suppress the virus. The underlying reason for this, for kids to develop large volumes of antibody is due to what's called the, the thymus gland, which is um, a little gland near your chest, which produces B cells, which in turn produces the antibody. That thymus gland is most active for adolescents and kids, and it starts to gradually degenerate and in turn basically turns into fat when you get really, really old. And therefore, the antibody response is not as vigorous as you once were when you were younger. So going back to the kids, you end up with a large number of little ones that are hard to detect or undetectable and who are pretty good at spreading this virus without even knowing it and by no fault of their own. It's just how their body responds, which makes the disease hard to control and contain. And, you know, because kids, they go to school, they exchange viruses, and they bring it back home, it can put everyone at home, especially grandparents, at risk. And here's the third element. Because it affects your intestines, the virus has been found in fecal matter. So diaper changes. They have a high bile load in their poop. So changing diapers, if the child is infected, it can be pretty bad for the grandparents if they don't wash their hands properly. Here are some preventative tips. So if you're going out to get groceries, for example, wear single-use gloves so you don't have to touch the cart. Masks are helpful in preventing to touching your face. I touch my face like 30 times an hour. And with a mask, there's a barrier between your hand and your face. And gloves will do the same thing. When you wear gloves, by the time you get your hand up to here, you'll be reminded not to touch your face and, you know, to itch your nose, etc. So there are other areas to be careful, you know. Uh, watch your mail. Your door handles, your faucets, bathroom surfaces, they're all big concerns. Cut back on your outings and restaurant visits because you know what, just wait a few more weeks and see and assess the transmission levels. You never know when you're going to go into a restaurant and a cook who isn't careful in his hygiene or his, her hygiene can transmit the disease. You know, I've witnessed an array of people's habits and how they abuse facilities and leave them dirty, overall cleanliness protocol, personal hygiene, eating, sneezing, coughing, complete lack of concern for their fellow people that are surrounding them. You know, washroom hand hygiene in public washrooms still astounds me till today. The amount of people that don't even wash their hands or attempt to wash their hands in five seconds or less, it's just quite, quite frankly, it's wrong. So here are some great cleaning protocols for you to put into practice at your workplace or at home. Any hospital grade disinfectant that is registered with a DIN and or an EPA number will be effective. I've provided you up to 16 disinfectants that I've listed in the description below from Charlotte Products, who make these products here both in, for Canada and the United States. They make them in Canada. So make sure you connect with your local distributor to see if they carry these products, which will be 100% effective. Proper cleaning protocol using the correct registered product and procedures will reduce the risk of an outbreak and improve the wellness of your employees and obviously the visitors that uh, come to your facility. There are two main aspects of a proper procedure. Number one, safely remove the organic matter. And then number two, 
sparingly, thoughtfully, and carefully apply disinfectants and sanitizers on the higher risk, high contact points, which will lower the overall risk. Your high risk areas in, you know, washrooms, break rooms, treatment, first aid rooms, and cafeterias is where you want to be very mindful. If you want a program that mirrors a safe approach that was outlined, you can look into a dilution control program or a ready to use solution. Both programs were great, but I prefer a ready to use solution as anyone can use it and it gives you a solid peace of mind knowing that there are no errors in the dilution ratio. But if you want to learn more about the dilution system for uh, a larger facility, I put the link in the description below and uh, it'll tell you all about that and how it can help you. I would suggest having it on hand, uh, which is the ready to use solution for any immediate outbreak, you know, threat or avoiding any cross contamination in your facility. And that's going to do it for Food Packaging TV today. Thanks for watching everybody. My name is Yilash P and don't forget to subscribe, share, like and comment. And uh, hit the little bell icon for new, for new videos and stay safe, stay healthy. Namaste.